Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in today's video, we're gonna see the weird part of the Go variables. And that is absolutely fun. I know most of you have watched some of the videos on Go or maybe have a look of how to declare variables. And many people are just worried about this weird syntax. And trust me, if you are seeing this as a weird, you haven't seen anything fun in the Go. So I'm gonna walk you through about the variable declaration and multiple types of them. We're gonna have fun with some of the superheroes in case you don't like them. Why you don't like them? What's nothing to like? What's there to not like in these superheroes? And of course, uh, in the declaration of the variables, let me give you a brief theory about that. So let's just say you're designing a game and in the game you want to keep a track of user that how much he's scoring. Obviously you want to reserve some memory in which you can put up these things. So in, the, in that particular case, we use variables. They are just a special container in which you can hold some values. In computer, we have different kinds of values, some numbers, some decimal point numbers, strings, and a whole bunch of other things, which we are gonna talk. For all the people who are experienced programmers, uh, or maybe have taken some of the uh, C basics, or maybe JavaScript or Java, yes, all the regular culprits are here. We got all the integers, float, uh, in 32, in 16, unsigned versions of them. Then we have got float, float 16. We got Boolean values, we got strings and all the usual culprits that you're looking up for. They are all here, no, nothing to worry. Now moving on to the point that how do we declare variables and constant? Pretty simple, if you want to keep a value exactly same throughout the life of program, we name them with the starting of const as a keyword. In case you want to make it changeable, you declare it with the keyword var. But there are a lot more to discuss up here. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and comment this one here. So make sure you also do that. I'm gonna keep all the files in the same directory and the same directory cannot have many files with main function. Of course, there should be one entry point. So we're gonna just comment this and save that so that I can give you as an exercise file. I've created a new file, 01variables.go. Uh, and you can look in the uh, description section about uh, from where you can download all of these files. I'll make all of these files available to you. So I'm gonna just copy this and paste that. So this is the basic stuff that we have got. Uh, we got our package declaration as a main at the top. Then we are defining a simple main method and in which we are trying to just print out some stuff. Uh, let's just remove all of it. Okay. So now moving forward, uh, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of DC and Marvel universe, for example, and that's how I'm gonna show you the weird part of declaring variables in the Go. So the first one, which is very common, is let's just say the Batman, which is gonna be of type string. And there we go, we have variety of data types up here. We got string, we got integer, you can see the list here in 16, 32, 64, we got unsigned versions of them. We got float as well, float 32, float 64, and we got uh, boolean as well. You can see the bool is here, a whole bunch of others are here. We're gonna majorly will be working with string and int in this video, so let's go ahead and declare a variable uh, which says I am Batman. There we go, looks nice. And I'm gonna simply use a package uh, format. So we need to import that as well. I'll talk about this import syntax a bit later, probably in the next video. This FMT is like an amazing package. I really want to talk in a separate video just for this FMT. And then we are gonna have a simple print ln and we are gonna have a Batman here. There we go. And let's just go ahead and save that. Nothing extraordinary so far. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this program. So if I run this one, it says I'm Batman, <laughs> nothing big deal up here. Now let's move on to another kind of syntax. Uh, let's declare Superman as well. So many time you're gonna see that there is a Superman and which is defined as a string, but I haven't assigned the value. And later on, you realize that now I need to use this variable. So you can simply go ahead and Superman is now gonna say, I am Superman, okay. Now we have already discussed this one thing that if you are declaring any variable, make sure that you are using it somewhere. Otherwise, this is gonna complain that, hey, you're reserving a memory, but you are not using it. That's not the efficient way of writing code in Go. 
So I'm gonna just copy this line and I'm gonna paste that up here. I'll be changing the variable many time up here. So we're gonna go ahead and say Superman. Again, no big deal, we got Batman and Superman. Now let's bring in Thor to the party as well and this is where the weird syntax comes up. So in case you don't want to infer what type of value is about to come, probably integer or probably string, you can go ahead and simply say Thor and it can use this uh, syntax which is not that weird. I don't know why people are making it as weird. This is pretty cool actually and you can simply say I am Thor and again we can go ahead and uh, print Thor as well. Okay, oops We are gonna have a Thor. There we go. So we got three superheroes so far if I run that again No big deal. We got uh, Batman Superman and Thor now let's bring up something more as well and this is where I found it very first time that yeah things can be a little bit deceiving here. So let's just say we are going to have Thor rating and we can infer that to any value. Let's just say for some reason, for some reason, the value, the Thor rating is going to be 3. And if I just print out these values, uh, obviously I can print that out, no big deal in that. I want to first show this to you. Uh, we run that and there we go. Now, I'm not going to be using the print ln. I want to show you a bit more and I'm going to use a print f this time. So print f actually gives you formatting options and you can have placeholders. Uh, for example, if I just remove everything here, inside this string I can have a person v for value and I can use a comma and say person with a capital T to have a data type of that value. And then I can have a Thor rating here, save that. Oops, forgot one thing as well. We need to provide one more. Thor rating, there we go. So in the first, I'm just printing up the value and with the person T, I'm trying to infer what data type it is storing. Now, as of now, it is very, very clear that we are storing a simple integer here. So that's no big deal. But things actually get, uh, you might have seen this. So when we say 3.0, you guessed it right. There is nothing fancy so far. What caught me with a little bit of the surprise that I can actually make this a flow just not by uh, saying 3.0 instead just 3. Point. And this is a little bit a call for nightmare or maybe a call for a lot of future bugs. Yes, Go supports this, but make sure you are absolutely cautious about this. Uh, Go is not going to give you any problem. It's going to just make this value as floating. So probably in the future, you're going to see some code which just says 3.0 uh, to make it a floating point value. Again, this caught me as totally off guarded. So make sure you catch that one as well. And we'll talk about these printf and println's and all bunch of other things in the next video. Right now, let's move on and declare some of the uh, more. Let's bring in some more superheroes. So a lot of people are fan in Python language of having something like this, uh, a comma b, and then they declare something like uh, two comma three, something like that. So yes, that is also taken care of in the Go as well. Let's go ahead and use that. So I'm going to have Iron Man and let's bring in Capt America, Captain America. And both of them are of type string. I can mention them separately as well. And then you can have comma separated values as well, just like this. And this is going to say, I am Iron Man. And this is going to say, I am Capt America. There we go. Okay. And then we can just go ahead and print these values as of now. I know that's weird that why we are printing these values so many times, but that's okay. So we're going to have a Captain Y, Y. I'm going to copy that from here. Okay, save that. And again, uh, you got covered with this syntax as well. I'm going to comment this block here because this is going to get us confused uh, probably some of the times. So this is all great so far. You have seen a bunch of other syntax. And yes, this is a bit new for people who are not coming up uh, from the values. Now, again, one more thing I would like to mention here is uh, there is a concept of default values. So uh, default value. So if I just uh, mention this as going to be, let's just say integer, I'm not using it as of now. And I'm just printing out these values. Oops, I'm going to copy this one, paste it up here. And instead of this, I'm going to just simply say default value. So you should be 100% aware of 
what is going to be the default value. In the case of integers and floats, it's a zero. And if you change this to string, then there is empty string up here. So if I run this again, uh, you can see that up here, that's an empty string. So make sure you are aware about the default values as well. Now moving on to the most weird thing I have ever seen uh, in any language and Go also supports declaration of that type. So you can use just var and like that. Okay. That's, that's too much to grasp at a second, so take your time and understand this. So you can just simply say war and inside this I can declare multiple variables if I want to. Let's bring Spider-Man to the party, so we're going to have Spider-Man and that's going to say I am uh, Spider-Man. There we go. Let's bring in more stuff, so Spider-Man's age is going to be, oops, Spider-Man age is going to be pretty young, let's go for 18. And powers. Now, as of now, we haven't read about the arrays or stuff. We'll do that in future. Let's bring up strings here. So uh, web slings, and it's gonna have a spidey sense and bunch of other things as well. Now, what makes this a lot of people confused that they infer this as almost like objects in many other language. No, these are not objects. These are variables, just like I have declared here Iron Man, just like I have declared Superman. These are standalone variables. And I can get one more guy here, just to clear up your confusion, Ant-Man. And we're gonna say, I am Ant-Man. So these are all standalone variables. Yeah, this is a very weird syntax of having it. And now we can just go ahead and just print it out. So let's go ahead and call all of these. So Spider-Man. We're gonna print his age, we're gonna print his powers, and we're gonna have Ant-Man as well. So save that. And yes, uh, that is also being supported. We can see I'm Spider-Man, 18, Web Sling, Spidey Sense, and I'm Ant-Man. So yeah, uh, there's a lot going on and lo a lot more fun in the go. And this is the entire way how you can have a variable declaration, almost all of them. I think I have covered all of them. Uh, but again, we need to talk a bit more about this FMT. It's so much fun to work with as this FMT and you are going to absolutely love that in the go. And in case you want to download these exercise files or the code files in which I'm writing all these stuffs, uh, just check in the description section. I'll make everything available in the description. And in case you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead, do that subscribe, tick, 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 stuff like that. And I'm going to catch you up in the next video.